Come on and lift up a great praise to God if that's your prayer today, if that's your heart today. Lord, I want you to send me and use me for your glory. We praise you this morning. Let's praise the Lord, everybody. Lord, we just give you the honor you deserve. We just give you the honor, Lord, that you're worthy of today, Jesus. No other name like the name of Jesus. We honor you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Isn't he good? Amen. You know, I'm so proud of our music team because they released that song that they wrote uh, on iTunes. And as of last I heard, it is at number 14. It was this morning. Now it's moved up, hey, since the first service. That's pretty good. Since the first service, it moved up to number 13. And that's pretty good. We don't have Sony. We don't have all the big corporations behind us. We, we, they are talking with us and we're praying about it. But I like releasing it ourselves. Amen. But isn't that beautiful? Now, what we're praying for is that all of you will download it, not while I preach, but you'll download it after the service and that it'll go all the way up to number one. Wouldn't that be awesome? And all of you there in Gwinnett and all of you in Spartanburg and Buford and Midtown and uh, Orange County and, and something else is starting today. And there's something. Did I leave somebody out? Gainesville, little Gainesville. Gainesville, and so, so thank you for that. Let's give our team, uh, Jonathan and our team, a great, great big hand clap. We appreciate y'all. They do such a great job. They really do. You can be seated, smile at somebody, tell them you look good, tell them you smell good too, and I appreciate that. Give me A flat, guys. The blood. You know something, before I sing it, I'm going to ask you to do something while you're sitting. My, uh, our, late, our latest granddaughter, um, six weeks ago, was born, and she had a little complication with her breathing, and, and something was not uh, fully developed, and the doctors thought it would develop, but uh, to make a long story short, she had to be hospitalized this week, and she's, uh, but this morning while we were having service in the first service she was operated on and the good news is we got news as the service was over that the surgery went perfect and everything is good and she's recovering well Sharice is down there now and I'll be going as soon as I can get down there from this service but I'm gonna ask you just to I'm gonna take a little selfishness here but I want you to pray for my granddaughter her, Lord, her name is Elliot. Will you pray for her right now? Just reach over and join somebody's hand. If you're single, this is the best part of the service right now. Yes. Reach over right now and just say, Jesus, touch Elliot. Heal her completely. Restore her health completely. Let there be no complications. I plead the blood of Jesus over Elliot in Jesus' name. And everybody say, thank you, Lord. You are a healer. And I just speak that over all of you too. In the mighty name of Jesus. The blood that Jesus shed for me. Ooh, it was way back on dark Calvary. The blood. Gives me strength from today. It will never lose its power. If you know it, sing it right where you are.
give him praise, everybody. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over every marriage, over every home, over every physical body, over every addiction, over every disease. In the name of Jesus, the devil is defeated. If you believe it, if you believe in the power of the blood, just right now thank him for the blood. Thank him for the blood. Nothing wrong with it. There's power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious You're singing good. Sing it again. the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Praise the name of Jesus. Isn't he good, church? Doesn't it feel good in here? Smile at somebody on your way down and open your Bibles with me to Daniel chapter 6, the book of Daniel, the Old Testament chapter 6. Since the last time I saw you, I preached all over the place. I went to Tulsa last Wednesday or Tuesday, I forget, and preached to 6,000 people. And then uh, the next night I was in Tacoma, Washington and preached to 2,000 pastors. And then I went to Los Angeles, and downtown Los Angeles in a big theater there. And I preached to several thousand young people. And... A lot of celebrities were there. Uh, L.A. Lakers basketball players were there, and Dodgers baseball players were there. Uh, several rock stars were there. One of them that has over 100 million people who follow them. And movie stars were there. I looked over and I saw uh, Captain America. <laughs> Had to do a double take. All kinds of people, very influential people. And I won't name the people, but if I name some of the people that you watch their shows and TV programs, and one of them in particular was so moved that they asked to come back in the green room after the service and talk to me. And this is a person that's on TV, a household name, and they were crying. And they said, I, exact words, I have never felt or experienced anything like that in my life. And it sure wasn't me. It was Jesus was in the house. And it was powerful what God did. And we don't need to limit God's grace. It can reach anybody, anywhere. And we just need to preach and tell the truth, and people are hungry for it. And I'm so thankful for what God is doing in and through this great church. And um, I, do, I do love that video because that's great, reaching those influential people, that's great. But just as important and just as beautiful and just as much of preciousness in God's sight 
is these teams of 800 plus people this week serving our community, going in to areas and doing for people demonstrations of God's love. It's just as great as me preaching to some of these famous people. You're reaching people. God says your reward will be probably even greater because that is pure and undefiled religion. And it's beautiful. Can you say amen? amen. I want to preach for just a few moments. Uh, it's 1137 for you clock watchers. Amen. It's 1130. I have a clock. I can see it. So you don't have to do this a lot. Amen. Daniel chapter 6, because it doesn't do any good. Daniel chapter 6. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be over the whole kingdom and over these three governors of whom Daniel was one, that the satraps might give account to them so that the king would suffer no loss. Notice that. So the king would suffer no loss. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and the satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. So the governors and the satraps sought to find some charge. They got jealous because he was promoted over all of them. And the governors and the satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find no charge or fault because he was faithful. Nor was there any error of fault found in him. Then these men said, we shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. I want to talk to you, particularly from verse 3. This Daniel distinguished himself above the others because an excellent spirit was in him. I preach many times through the years. There are certain um, themes that I guess every ministry feels an affinity with. And when I first came to Free Chapel, I guess it's been 26 years now, I came and this particular chapter and this particular verse, to be specific, in the first year of my pastoring this great church, the Holy Spirit lit it up in my soul, lit it up in my spirit. I don't know why it stood out so strong to me. And God gave me this desire to research and search and look into that. What does it mean Daniel distinguished himself among his brothers because he had an excellent spirit. And I began to preach and teach a lot on this subject in the beginning years of this church when I was your pastor. Because I believe that we need an excellent spirit. In our Christian character, we need to ask God for an excellent spirit spirit. An excellent spirit literally means an excellent attitude. It exemplifies Christ. When we have an excellent spirit, we exemplify Jesus Christ. Daniel, the Bible said, was flawless in his character. He was impeccable in his willingness to be great for God. He existed in a terrible setting. He had been taken captive into a secular, uh, idol-worshiping Babylon culture. Kidnapped, taken away. They took the sharpest, the wisest, the, the, the most talented, and left the rest after they burned the city of Jerusalem down. And they took the most talented, gifted ones in that culture and put them in the Babylonian culture. The Bible said to build his kingdom that Nebuchadnezzar used the smartest, the most gifted. He gave them and made them learn a new language, the Chaldean language. No longer were they allowed to speak Hebrew. He changed their names from Hebrew names to Babylonian names. He even changed their diet. And all of those things were fine. But then he, rec he recognized Nebuchadnezzar 
I'll never really change these people until I change their worship. As long as they're worshiping in my culture, their God, their worship that connects them to their God is more powerful than my culture. And so, I, don't, I didn't have time to read it, he built an idol, a statue, and he made a command that when the music plays, that's what it said, when the music starts playing, when you start hearing the music play, everybody in Babylon is to bow down and worship the statue. I couldn't help but think, you know, if we're not careful, we, just like that generation, the Bible said that everybody bowed down but Daniel. He would not bow down when he heard the sound of the music. If we're not careful, music can have a powerful influence on our lives for the negative. If you're listening to music that disconnects you from God, if you listen, notice that when the music played, then you had to bow down. And Daniel said, I'm not going to let the music of this culture cause me to disconnect from my worship to God and start worshiping idols. I can't help but believe that some of the most filthy music that's being put out with profanity, with pornography, it's musical pornography. I don't understand how Christians, particularly young people, think that they can listen to that, pour that into their spirit hour after hour, day after day, week after week, pouring profanity, pouring musical pornography and filth into your spirit and not think that it won't disconnect you from God. Something as seemingly innocent as rhythm and, and raps and songs and lyrics can absolutely cause you to bow down to idols and disconnect from God. It matters what we listen to. What we listen to matters. The enemy is thrilled when he can manipulate your thinking when he can cause you to break your relationship with God. And just as Daniel had to make a decision in a secular culture, he was away from his mother, away from his father, away from his pastor, away from everybody, and he had to make a decision. I know everybody here listens to it. I know everybody responds to this music, but I have a higher call. I must stay committed and connected to my God no matter where I am. I don't just praise him in youth group. I don't just praise him when I go to church around church folks. I am who I am in the college dorm. I am who I am wherever I go, and nothing is going to be more powerful in my life than Jesus Christ. Christ, I worship him. I don't worship the idols of this world, especially the music. Come on and clap your hands. I'm preaching the truth. I'm preaching the truth. Daniel was a spiritual young man. He had the ability to interpret dreams. He had the ability to, to to have visions and operated in the gifts of interpretation of dreams. But the thing that impressed people more than anything else was the way that he carried himself. He caught, listen carefully, he caught the eye of leadership because he distinguished himself with an excellent spirit. There was something about the way that he conducted himself. There was something about the way that he, that he did what he did that distinguished him from everybody else. Your Bible said that there were 120, we would call them governors, over 120 providences. And then out of those were three presidents. And then on top of the triangle was the king. So you had 120 powerful politicians. Then you had three presidents. Daniel was one of the three. And then the Bible said that the king watched the, those, those three and decided to put Daniel over all of them, including the other two that were supposed to be his equal. I love it. He was eleva elevated to president of the nation only under the king himself because he had 
an excellent spirit. He had a spirit of excellence, which means he was a man who was diligent. Listen, given to precision. He was dependable. He was detailed. And it elevated him. He had an excellent spirit. What does that mean? He had an excellent attitude. What was Daniel like? I believe that if you gave Daniel a vacuum cleaner, he wouldn't just vacuum clean. He would take the dust buster and go in between the cracks of the seat and make sure that everything looked right. He didn't just do a get by, get over job. He had an excellent spirit. The church today needs an excellent spirit. When, when, an, when, when an excellent spirit comes on you, you become excellent in what you do. You do it with div- diligence. You do it with professionalism. People look at the way you work. People look at the way you succeed. And they say, you've got it together. That brings glory to the God that we serve. That causes his kingdom to suffer no damage. When we live excellent lives, we have excellent marriages. We have excellent lives and lifestyles because we want to bring glory and honor to Jesus Christ. I'm tired of the innuendos about Christians. Some people make fun of Christians and say, They're only just a bunch of emotional people who go to church and cry and shout and they're mental pygmies. All we can do is dance and cry and praise God a little bit and play some music, but we can't work. We can't start businesses. We can't have success in life. I hate to tell you this, but you are old school somebody. The new Christian doesn't look like that anymore. We've come to a place where we understand we're the head and not the tail. We're above only and not beneath. We belong in politics. We belong in every aspect of our society. We belong in government. We belong in entertainment. We belong in medicine. We belong in law. We belong in Hollywood. We belong wherever we go. We don't bow down. We influence the culture for the glory of Jesus Christ. And we'll do it with excellence, diligence. Amen. This is what I started preaching when we were a little church. That that we're going to, whatever we do, it's going to be excellent. That's why when you pull up on our properties, wherever you are, you're not going to see a bunch of broke down junk. We believe that if his name is on it, it ought to be excellent. If people walk in here, it ought to be excellent. If they look out there, it ought to be excellent because our king is excellent. His name is excellent and there's none like him and we will praise him with a spirit of excellence. Come on, somebody. Give him some excellent praise, not mediocre, not get by, get over. Excellent in everything that we do. Hallelujah. Excellence affects every aspect of our life. Every part of our life ought to be excellent. If an excellent spirit is on you, we should be excellent in our hygiene. You know, it don't take a lot of money to be clean. It don't take a lot of money to... Make yourself look presentable and nice. You're never going to get out of poverty until you get a job opportunity and you show up looking like a winner. It don't take a lot of money to press your pants. It don't take a lot of money to comb your hair. It don't take a lot of money. Be excellent and brush your teeth. It doesn't take... I'm going to preach like I feel like because this is what built a great church. I just started getting up and preaching just like it is. You know, tell your neighbor, if you're excellent, come on, tell them, say, if you're excellent, it'll show up in your armpits. You put some deodorant on. You, it'll show up in your breath. You'll get a breath mint. I'm just trying to help. 
It's the truth. We need an excellent spirit. The gospel will get right down to where you live, right up under your armpit. The Holy Ghost will make you win. The Holy Spirit will make you an asset to our society. And I don't care where you start. It ain't about where you start. But if you'll let the gospel get a hold of you, it'll pick you up. It'll clean you up. It'll set you up for success. And you will become an asset instead of something that just soaks in everything all the time. You will actually be, be a blesser. You will actually be a contributor. You you will actually be someone who shines light in a dark world. Clap your hands. I, I tell you, I feel this thing. Mediocrity seems to be the thing of the day. Children go to school and they don't even shoot for an A anymore. It's I'm just going to get a C. That's not excellence. The goal is not a C. The goal is an A+. Plus. When you're excellent, you'll stop coming in late. When you're excellent, I better get a big one on this, you'll stop leaving early. Woo, I felt something go all the way through me and come out the other end. <laughs> Praise the Lord. When you're excellent, you won't be sloppy at your work. When you're excellent, you won't be slack on your job. Just throw it together on the spur of the moment. That's what we do. You know, when I came up in church, I guess they did the best they could, but they'd get up and the guy would, old brother Joe or whatever his name was, would bring his guitar. He, he didn't come to practice. He didn't believe in practice. He believed that he just relied on the anointing. He'd come in and hook his guitar up, and you'd hear him just as Dad would be getting up to open. And back then, they used to read a scripture or something to open, and Dad would be reading. He'd be over there, dar, 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 tuning his guitar. Dar, dar, dar. Somebody else would come in late and sit on the drums and start hitting the cymbals and just, you know, PA sets blurring out. Nobody didn't get there early to make sure everything's good. That stuff drives me crazy. We ain't going to have it around here. God deserves the best. Oh, we're just Christians. No, we are just Christians. Therefore, we don't go by, get by, slack by. I don't believe in just showing up. And, and you know, if, if people going to come in here, it ought to be this good all the time. We don't just do this. We didn't just though you were coming today and made this look like this. This is what we do. This is who we are. We don't have to do a lot of stuff when somebody real special, some big shot governor, or if, if the president were coming in here today, we wouldn't do anything different. This is what we do. Because he deserves the best. Jesus Christ, the one that we represent. You know, we just sloppy stuff. And, you know, one time I, ha I had uh, someone bring me a letter they wanted me to sign. And, 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 and I noticed that the stuff was blurred. And, uh, some of the printing had been messed up. And I said, I'm not sending that out. Oh, we're just Christians, Pastor. They know. No. No, we're not. We don't do that. Y'all looking at me partly cloudy right now. <laughs> Excellence. Excellence. It ought to be better than the secular world. It ought to be better. That's why people, you know, why, 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 why do y'all do what y'all do? Because he deserves the best. Notice the key to the story. He said, because he had an excellent spirit, the kingdom suffered no damage. Wow. That's what lit up in my soul 26 years ago. That if we get an excellent spirit, we won't be embarrassed to invite our neighbors. 
We won't be embarrassed. People won't be afraid to invite their colleagues in the law office or in the factory or wherever. They won't worry about coming to church and somebody getting up and doing something silly and stupid and embarrassing. Because when you have an excellent spirit, there will be no damage done to the kingdom. That whatever we present, it is presented with excellence in a way that touches and changes the lives of men and women. When we are not excellent about the work that God has given us to do, when we, what does excellence mean? When we are not detailed, when we don't have precision and class and, and just do it the best, the very, very best that we can. All of you listening to me right now, you ought to have an excellent spirit on the job site. Clean up after you did your work. Fix things up. Do excellent. Do excellent. Don't just get by and leave stuff. I can't stand for somebody to come into my house or whatever and do something, and I'm paying them to do it, and then they leave the mess for me to clean up. We need an excellent spirit. Because notice that the king was watching 123 leaders. And out of the 123, out of the 120, there was three on the top. And the king noticed how, how Daniel distinguished himself. Because he had an excellent spirit. And the king said, I'm putting him over it all. You don't know who's watching you. You don't know who's watching what kind of job you do. You don't know. You think that you're getting by and you're getting over, just kind of slopping around. And, you know, as long as you, and, you know, the funny thing is when you get an excellent spirit and the people on, in your crew or your job, they don't have an excellent spirit, they'll have a problem with you. As long as I slop around and you slop around and we're all slopping around and we're all slack, it's no problem. But the minute you get an excellent spirit, notice they got a problem with him Notice they started conspiring against him when he got an excellent spirit. So when you get an excellent spirit, don't think everybody's going to be your little cheerleader. But go on and do what God's called you to do with all that you've got. Woo, preaching better than y'all letting on now. We better get an excellent spirit. Get it together. Get it detailed. Get it precise. Get an excellent spirit because your competitor has one. Go clean up your closet. Go wash your car. Go clean out the trash from your car. I, I, I'm bad. I eat in the car. I'm bad about living basically out of the car. But at some point, I really believe what I'm telling you. At some point, the Holy Spirit will convict you and say, your car is nasty. Clean the car up. You know, there's a verse that says, cleanliness is next to godliness. Did you know that's a Bible verse? That means if, you, if your house is nasty if, and it stays nasty and you don't never clean it up, you're not living close to God because God said cleanliness is next to godliness. Ooh, come on. Is this too strong? You okay? Be excellent on your job site. Clean your truck up. Wash it. You got bumper stickers all about Jesus. And the thing hadn't been washed in four months. At least, I, I'm not, it don't matter what kind of car or how old. Just make sure what you got is clean. If you've got one pair of jeans and two shirts, make sure they're clean and kept. And go, you, go, you go like you've got whatever God's given you. Do it with excellence. And if it's got a hole in it, wear it with that hole with excellence. Rip it a little more and it'll be better in style. <laughs> I love it because he didn't have a just get over attitude. Do enough to look like I'm doing it. Ooh, are you one of those employees? That you do enough to look like you're doing it? Fine. 
something on him, his colleague said. We've got to find something on him and, 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 and sabotage his success. And I love this. This is my last point. They started checking his record. They started checking his work. They started checking his integrity. They started looking, to, you know, let's find him in a lie. Let's find him stealing something. Let's find him cheating. Let's find him having an affair. Let's find him sleeping with somebody. And let's, let's, let's leak it to the king, and then he'll lose his power because he ain't all that. He doesn't really have that kind of excellence in every aspect of his life. But when you have an excellent spirit, it also hits your character. It hits your integrity. You carry yourself in a way that you understand I am to be who God has called me to be no matter where I am, no matter what setting I'm in, and I don't have secrets. And they tried to find a lie. They tried to find a theft. They tried to find him cheating. But notice that when the Holy Spirit really gets a hold of you, he'll make you dependable. He'll make you trustworthy. He'll make you faithful. The Bible said they could not find a lie. They could not find thievery. They could not find uh, sexual affairs. They could not find things uh, to, to, that were uh, uh, you know, there that they could uh, attack his character with. He was what he was because he had an excellent spirit. And I'm telling you today, that this little sermon may not be about miracle signs and wonders in the third rim of the angel band of the seventh horn of the book of Revelation. But boy, I'll tell you what, if you get an excellent spirit, just like 20 Six or 27 years ago, the Lord said, preach that into this church. Preach it. And I'd preach it over and over in different ways. I'd preach it over and over in different ways. But I kept going back to the theme. We need an excellent spirit. We need an excellent ushers. We need excellent choir. We need excellent music. We, need ex we didn't have but one camera up in the balcony, a VCR camera and a cassette tape ministry and one that, that did three tapes at a time and you had to go to a little table out in the lobby and get a cassette tape. But we did it with excellent. We bought little t-shirts for the video man. We bought little t-shirts for the girls that were selling the tapes and they did it and we got some little uh, uh, stickers and put them on there and put church on fire. That's what we called it back then, church on fire. And we were selling those, little, you know, it's just a little thing, but we got excellent with it. One camera. Now we got, I don't know how many, six, seven, eight, nine, I don't know how many. Big old cameras, expensive cameras. <laughs> and we go to 200 nations around the world. But we were excellent with one little camera. We did the best we could. We, we took it serious. We would pray and get together and hold hands. Lord, we're sending out 25 VCR tapes this week because we're getting orders from all over the world, 25. Basically from ball ground. Somebody ordered one in you know, Tacoma, Cleveland. But we were excellent. Now, I don't care who walks in here. Now, I'm never embarrassed at anybody coming in here because I know we prayed. I know we fasted. I know we've sought God's face. I know our teens are excellent. I know our worship is excellent. And we do it with an excellent spirit. We're not here to glorify us, our name. We are not even here to glorify Free Chapel. Who cares? We're here to glorify Jesus Christ. We must be excellent. Come on and shout amen, somebody. This week, this week when I, I was invited, one of the most moving days of my life, one of the most enjoyable days of my life so far, I'm 56, and one of them happened this past week. I was called by James Dobson to come to Colorado Springs and sit down for two hours on his radio show, and he wanted to interview me about Love Like You've Never Been Heard, our book. And for two hours, and it'll be played all across the world on 1,800 radio programs, uh, radio stations, I should say. And we sat 
in a studio. First, he wanted to go to lunch. And so we went to lunch. We talked and laughed, and he told me stories. And, and it was just an amazing time, just a real connection. He's 82 years old. Still, how many of you know who James Dobson is? I mean, focus on the family and all of that. And then we went back and we taped these shows and the presence of God came in the studio and he started crying. And I started crying. And the presence of God filled that place. And he mentioned to me at lunch, he said, you know, I've seen God do so much that this ministry started with nothing and He's taken us all over the world. And he said, the number one prayer that I pray every day of my life is like, I, and it's one of those moments where you know this is God speaking through a man to you. He said, I pray this prayer every day. God, because you've trusted me with so much, don't ever let me bring shame to your name and to your kingdom. That the kingdom, Daniel said, do you notice that verse three? He said he had an excellent spirit that the kingdom would suffer no harm. We live in a greater kingdom than the Babylonian kingdom. We live in the kingdom of God and I need my character to be so excellent that I'll never bring shame to Jesus' name, to these people under the sound of my voice, to our church. Don't you want that? I'm, and, and hey, you're here and you represent the church. You are the church. May we have an excellent spirit. May we have no secrets. May we be like Daniel. May there be no secrets between husband and wife. May there be no secrets between uh, us and, and, and our private life and our open life, our secular life. What people see is what they ought to get. May there be no secrets. They search for things and they couldn't find it because he had an excellent spirit. It's time to clean it up. It's time to present our very best for Jesus Christ. Because the world is watching us and they're looking for the church that will be excellent for the King of Kings. I don't want you to leave. I want you to stand to your feet at every campus all over this room and all of our rooms. Right there in Midtown, right there in wherever you are. Just stand to your feet. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I was, a, I was really amazed in the earlier service, how many people came to surrender their life to Jesus. And I think it's because this little message strikes like it did me the first time it hit me 26 years ago. Something in me wants to do something great for God. It did back then. It still does. I believe God calls all of us to a, something great. But you can't do it without Jesus. You can't be excellent. You can't be free. You can't be real. You can't be without dark secrets unless Jesus cleanses you and sets you free. And he's here today to do exactly that. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you would say, Pastor Jensen, I'm not living an excellent life for Jesus Christ. I know that I'm far from him. I, I, I don't know what would happen if I went into eternity. I, I don't feel good about where I am, and I'd like to see a change. I know there's a more excellent way. I know there's a more excellent life, and I'm not living it. And I want Jesus today to give me an excellent spirit, an excellent home, an excellent family starts where you are right now with a decision to surrender to Jesus Christ. Pastor, pray for me. I know I'm not right with God, but I want to be. Pray for me. If that's you, boldly raise your hand right where you're standing. I want to see it. That's fantastic. That's amazing. It's fantastic. They're going up. Every campus, lift your hand. Right here, lift your hand. High. If you're in overflow, lift your hand if God's speaking to you. Every one of you that have your hand high, I want you to get out of the seat where you're standing right now. And I want you to come down front just as quick as you can come. Come on, just as quick as you can come. You're so close to it. 
You're so close to it. You're so close to it. You know you were born for greater things. You know you were not born for mediocrity. You know you were not born for common life. You know you were not born just to be ordinary and waste the days of your life. It begins with reconnecting to the one who created you, who knew your name before you were in your mother's womb. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There are more, get out of your seat. I'm talking to young people. I'm talking to teenagers and college students and husbands and wives and moms and dads. There may be somebody whose marriage is in terrible, terrible shape. Why don't you get out of that seat? Grab the hand of that wife. Grab the hand of that, 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 that spouse and walk down and say, we need an excellent marriage. The enemy's tearing us to pieces, but we want a home that glorifies Jesus. All you gotta do sometimes is humble yourself. Come on, come on, come on. Anyone else, anyone else? This is beautiful. I love seeing these young people. Give them a big hand. That's awesome, that's awesome. Come on, darling. Come on, come on, come on. There's victory in this altar. There's peace in this altar. There's purpose in this altar. You were born for more than just getting by, just getting by. God wants you to become excellent, detailed, he has something that you can do that nobody can do it quite like you can do it. Come on. Come on. Anybody else? This is awesome. They keep coming and I love it. I'm just going to wait. Now, how many times we have to clap till the last soul comes? I'm so thankful that every one of you came to church today. It's truly, truly humbling to me that God somehow would hear, would, would cause words that are spoken to touch your heart. And that you, knowing you, you wouldn't do this. This is not you, this is not normal for you to walk out in front of a bunch of people and stand down here. It took a lot to do that. It took a lot to do that. You wouldn't have done it. I tell you what made you do it, it was the Holy Spirit drawing you something in you said I really need to respond to this so you if you never hear from God again you have heard his voice today and he called your name he called your name he wants you to know he's not done with you he wants you to know that good days and good things are ahead let's pray this prayer pray it from your heart everybody in this room under the sound of my voice Every campus say these words, Lord Jesus, I surrender. I give my life to you. I believe in you. I thank you that the chains that have bound me have been severed by the truth of your word. And I know there's an excellent life. There's an excellent life that you have called me to. I receive it. I thank you, Lord, that you bled and died and rose on the third day to give me a brand new life. And today I embrace it. And today I receive it. And today I declare Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. And I will live for Him. And I will be excellent for Him in Jesus' name. Now just give God a mighty praise. Come on. Give Him a mighty praise. Can we sing this one time before we're dismissed? Use me. I lay down my life for yours. Here I am. Use me, Lord. One more time. Take up. Let's sing. Take up your cross. Take up my cross and I'll fall. Come on, make it like a bold declaration. Take up my cross.
Here's what you need to do. There are people down front all around you that are just going to get a little information. We want to help you in your new walk. We care. We care. There are people in this church who will do nothing but love you, help you. You don't face anything that all of us haven't already faced and still face, but we're in it together. And uh, there's a real community of faith that can change your life right here. We have something called Next Steps. It's right out there. You can go to the Connection Lounge. It's called Next Steps. And one of the next steps, there's three steps, and one of them is water baptism. Matter of fact, this Wednesday night, I'm going to be baptizing people. And it's going to be, it's one of the highlights of, of, our, of our month when we do water baptism. I'll do it right over here. We bring a tank in here, and it's beautiful, and it's powerful. And that'll happen Wednesday night, but you, don't, you won't be able to do that one because it's already full. But you can get signed up for the next one, and it would be my honor to get to do that. Welcome to the family of God. You are clean. You are washed. You are accepted. You are chosen. You belong to the Lord. Are y'all ready for the blessing? Hallelujah. Everybody say, I'm going to download. Here I am. It'd be excellent to see it go to number one, wouldn't it? How many of you believe we could do it? Just, just download it. Do you know how to do that? If you don't, find somebody with glasses. They're the smart people. And, and, say, and say, download it for me. Amen. All right, you ready? And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine on you. Be gracious unto you. Lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace and excellence this week in everything you do. We love you so much. God bless you. I'm going to hang out down here and say hello if you're visiting, if you're a guest or you're regular or whatever and you want to say hello. I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. I'll be right down here. I'd love to meet and greet you and say hello. Thank you for worshiping with us. God bless you. And as we leave here today, I want to encourage you to stay connected with all that God is doing through the life of this ministry. As I mentioned earlier in pre-service, uh, Pastor Jensen was just recently invited to Washington, D.C. to sit at the table and be able to speak into different uh, social reform issues such as prison reform. And right now there is legislation going in place that is bipartisan, which is a praise report uh, for us. And so I want to encourage you to stay connected, continue to pray for this ministry as God continues to use this ministry to impact the world in this nation. And so as a reminder, when Pastor Jensen is there, you are there as a representative as well, and our voices are being heard. But also for our ladies, if you have not yet registered for Divine Women's Conference, do that today. This conference is going to change your life, I promise you. And not only that, we have free child care available, which is amazing for all of our moms out there. So make sure you go to divineconference.org, register today. You don't want to miss out. But we love you so much. We're thrilled that you joined us here today at Free Chapel, and we'll see you next Sunday morning.